Right, so before I go on to tell you how to calculate the inverse of a matrix, I want to give you a useful theorem which you can use to greatly simplify the calculation of the determinant. So if I just state the theorem, suppose I've got a matrix A, Okay, then I can write A in terms of a number of rows or columns. So I can write this as row number 1 here. That's an n vector. Row number 2 here. That's another n vector. And go all the way down to row n here. Okay, so I can divide the matrix A into n rows like this. Okay, And the theorem says two things. First of all, if you add one row of A to a different row of A, then that does not change the determinant. So adding one row of A to another row of A does not change the determinant. Okay, so if that's not clear what I mean, I'll do an example like this. Suppose that I've got that A, this is the determinant of this matrix here, R1, R2, up to Rn. Okay. So if I haven't mentioned it, you can use these straight lines like this to indicate determinant of the matrix. So this means determinant of the matrix here. Okay. So what the theorem says is this is going to be equal to the determinant of a matrix where I take one of the rows here and add it to another row here. So for example, I could decide to add the first row to the second row. So this would be the same as R1, and then here I put R1 plus R2. And then the rest are the same. Okay, um, so that's kind of picture or example, if I do one with actual numbers in, suppose I wanted to calculate the determinant of this matrix I started with. No, hold on, six, six, seven, nine. Okay, this is my example I'm going to use again and again, a three by three matrix. So here I've got row one is this, row two is this, row three is this, right? So I can decide to add one row to any other row. And one thing you can do using this is you can make more zeros. So for example here, I can choose to form the matrix where I take the third row and I replace it with the third row minus two lots of the second row. Okay. So I leave the first two rows the same and then the third row I subtract two lots of the second row. So this gives me 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. First two rows stay the same. And then here I get 6 minus 2 times 3, which is 0. And then here I get 7 minus 2 times 4, that's minus 1. And here I get 9 minus 2 times 5, that's also minus 1. Okay. And the theorem says that the determinant of both of these matrices will be the same. So that's a very useful theorem, you see, because now if I want to compute the determinant of this matrix, I can decide to focus on this row of A here, and then I need to take the dot product with the same row in the matrix of determinants. But that means I only have to calculate the value of the matrix of determinants here. Okay? So in other words, I can write this down as three times the determinant of this matrix there, right? This is three times the determinant of one, two, minus one, minus one, except that you have to multiply by the chessboard, whose position here is minus one. So that gives you another minus. And then the determinant of this is minus one plus two. So that's minus three times one, which is minus three. So by using this theorem to make zeros here, you can simplify the, the calculation of the determinant quite a lot.
Okay, so that's the first part of the theorem. There is a second part of the theorem, which is also useful. And the second part of the theorem says the following. If you multiply a row of A by a number, let's call the number lambda, then this does change the determinant, but it changes the determinant by a, a certain amount, which you know. Okay, so it changes the determinant by the factor lambda to the power n, where n is the size of the matrix. Okay. So for example, if I take my favorite matrix, I could decide to multiply one of these rows by a number. So for example, I could choose to multiply the second row by 2. So I could take row 2 and replace it by two lots of row 2. Okay. So the first and third rows stay the same. Okay. And then this row I multiply by 2, so that will give me 6, 8, 10. So I've multiplied by 2, so lambda is 2, and this says the determinant should change by lambda to the n, so that's 2 to the power of 3. Right? 2 is the scale of which I've changed this row, and n is the size of the matrix, which is 3. So this is also sometimes useful if you want to change the matrix into a simpler one. For example, if all of the elements of a row are divisible by 2, then you can use this to divide by 2 in the row. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll finish this video with a final example to show you how useful this theorem is. And I'll do an example of a 4 by 4 matrix, which is obviously more complicated to calculate the determinant of. Okay. So let's suppose I want to define the determinant of the following matrix, uh, 0, 1, 3, minus 1, 1, 2, minus 1, 1, 3, minus 4, 1, 0, 2, 1, 1, 1. Okay, that's a 4 by 4 matrix. So you could just pick a row and then calculate matrix of determinants, which would mean calculating lots of 3 by 3 determinants. But Calculating 3 by 3 determinants is a pain, so it's best if you can use the theorem to make lots of zeros, because it's easy to calculate the determinants with, with zeros, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the theorem to make zeros down the first row here, okay? So in other words, I'm going to use this second row here to make zeros here. So I'm going to replace row 3 with row 3 minus 3 row 2 and I'm going to replace row 4 with row 4 minus 2, lots of row 2. So first two rows stay the same. Right, and then at row 3 minus 3, row 2. So that's 3 minus 3 is 0. 4 minus 4 minus 6 is minus 10. Minus 1 plus 3 is 4, and 0 minus 3 is minus 3. And again here you get 0, minus 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, and 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Okay. Now I can uh, use the, the method to count calculate the determinant using this row, which has lots of zeros in. So therefore, I'm only interested in the determinant of this matrix here, where I cross out this and this. Okay. So this, therefore, is equal to, if we look at the test board, So this one here has got a minus, so I need to multiply by minus, and it's equal to this 
1 times the determinant of this matrix. 1, 3, minus 1, minus 10, 4, minus 3, minus 3, 3, 1. Okay. So instead of having to calculate four 3 by 3 determinants, using this theorem I only have to calculate one 3 by 3 determinant. Okay, and you can use the same trick again. So, for example, I could decide to use this first row here to get zeros there and there. So, if I do that, so I'm going to make zeros. Probably, okay, I'll do it slightly differently. Probably I'll use this row here to make zeros there and there. So, I'll do row 2 goes to row 2 minus 3 row 1 and row 3 goes to row 3 plus row 1 okay so then you get minus 1 times the determinant of first row says the same then here row 2 minus 3 row 1 so that's minus 13 4 minus 12 is minus 8 and this is 0, and then row 3 plus row 1, so that's 3 minus 2, 6, and 0. Okay, and now again I can use the method expanding this one. So here it's a 3 by 3 chessboard, and you see this one has a plus, so this one is multiplied by plus 1. So this is equal to minus 1 times minus 1 from here times the determinant of the matrix I get when I delete that and that. So that's the determinant minus 13, minus 8, minus 2, 6. Okay, so that's 1, 13, 6 is our minus 78 and minus 16 is minus 94. Okay, so it's a bit of a long calculation because it's a 4 by 4 matrix, but this theorem, using this theorem to make zeros, makes the calculation much easier. If I'd done it without using this theorem, then I'd have to calculate the determinant of four 3 by 3 matrices, which is obviously much more work.